the main slate. Niners at Vikings. Vikings six-point dogs at home, the total 45 and a half. I'm going back to the well with Jalen Naylor. Only had one target, and it was that 21-yard touchdown last week. I had a 46% route rate. However, been very efficient in his career. That's why I like this guy. You know, haven't seen too much of him because he always gets hurt. But when he's been on the field, 11.5 yards per target, 17.6 yards per catch, and a touchdown on 15% of his reception. So uh, he makes the most of his opportunities. Minnesota, remember, won that game 28-6 to against the Giants. But now, six-point underdogs, it could be a much more pass-heavy game script. And Jordan Addison, the number two receiver, re-injured his ankle. So who knows how many snaps he can last for if he goes at all. So you could see Naylor uh, end up playing you know, 70 80 90% of the snaps if Addison uh, is out. And even if he's not, you know, just he might end up overtaking Powell as that clear cut uh, number three receiver because it was kind of like a split. Uh, Addison was like 60%, Naylor and, and Powell were right around 50%. So uh, I think the more Naylor plays better, the more uh, snaps he'll get because Powell is more of that, you know, they want him to return kicks and stuff, punts and stuff like that. So I think Naylor is kind of the guy that they would love to just take that number three role. But if Addison's out, he might have to take that the number two role. I think he's a better candidate. Uh, than Powell for that. Yeah, you, good calling him last week. And I, I do think Addison probably misses at least a week. Uh, another encouraging sign is just how good Sam Darnold looked. Uh, granted, it was against the Giants, but he yeah. had the second highest PFF grade. And I kind of said he might have like a Geno Smith 2022 season, and it's still way too early <laughs> to tell. But it's at least encouraging for, you know, like Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, and Jalen Neller that Sam Darnold himself looked capable in this offense in, in week one. That was certainly a question mark. So, that's that's why I'm also you know much higher on Naylor, Naylor going forward. I mean, if Alan Lazard can come from the dead to catch two touchdowns against the Niners, then Jalen Naylor should catch fifteen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Very possible, yeah. <laughs> uh, Vegas at Baltimore. The Ravens are favored by nine and a half. The total is just forty one and a half. So this is expected to be uh, a potential Ravens uh, blowout spot here. Yeah. Who do you like? Um, I'm going to go with Rashad Bateman at 3,900. Um, the, the cat's out of the bag, obviously, when it comes to Isaiah likely getting more playing time in this offense and being more productive, as we saw in, in his week one eruption. Um, but another trend that emerges that, you know, Bateman is the clear number two receiver in this offense now um, with an 88% routes run rate in week one. Uh, had a decent two catch for 53 yard game. Uh, he had a ridiculous a dot of 26.4 yards downfield, which I think is important because, uh, he's probably not going to see a ton of targets, but, it, but if he is getting downfield targets, uh, that's kind of what we want when it comes to these flyers and DFS. So, you know, I think if, if, you know, the Raiders defense is trying to lock up, you know, Lamar and Henry in the backfield, Zay Flowers, Mark Andrews, and now Zay likely, you know, Bateman could get loose for a couple big games here potentially a touchdown to keep that streak alive. So uh, I think Bateman is sneaky, at least at 3,900 here. Yeah. The fact that he's on the field all the time now, I mean, he's probably a bust <laughs> if we're being honest. I don't, that was interesting that they uh, extended him, but yeah. uh, you know, well, like, he's been kind of hurt. Like yeah. for, from an excuse point of view, he's constantly been hurt. I think now's kind of the first time he's been fully healthy, but I agree. He has not been living up to his uh, first round pedigree. Yeah, but that's why he's cheap. So that's what we like. Yep, exactly. Uh, Chargers at Panthers. Panthers are six and a half point home dogs, total 39. Uh, I'm going to your guy, J.K. Dobbins, 5,400, 10 for 135 and one last week, while Gus was just 11 for 26 with no touchdowns. And on top of that, Dobbins, a 59% route rate, Gus, 17%. So, uh, you know, passing game. Dobbins was already the the lead guy and the way he ran the ball, I think he earned, you know, probably better than just that 50 50 split uh, in the run game as well. 7.8 yards after contact, according to PFF for Dobbins, 1.6 for Gus Edwards running behind the same exact uh, offensive line and Carolina gave up the second most fantasy points to running backs in week one, 36 touches, 172 yards, two touchdowns to St. Running backs and Brown, their best interior lineman, 
uh, is now hurt. So uh, it might get even worse for Carolina on defense. So uh, going back to the well here with Dobbins, who as long as he's one of these guys, as long as he's healthy, <laughs> yeah. uh, he probably will miss like eight <laughs> games. But <laughs> this uh, is the one, one of them he's going to play. So I think you continue to target him. He's so good when healthy. I'm rooting for him. I hope he stays healthy too. He, he's turning into like Rashad Penny where we just got to enjoy the handful of games. He is healthy. Uh, and it's crazy how he doesn't even look close to hundred percent and how efficient he is. Remember he came back from like that knee injury and he scored an 80 yard touchdown where he looked like Darren Ravel, like running into the end zone. Like he was, he was hanged <laughs> up. So, you know, it's like, Oh, man, I, I love him. Hopefully, he can stay healthy, uh, not banking out. But at least for now, yeah, he's looking he's looking pretty solid in this offense. Yeah, he's like, uh, what is it? I think it's the is it the big people in Mario Kart that have like the high speed but no acceleration, like the Wario uh, Wario's. Mario Kart, I think like, it's like yeah, Donkey Kong, uh, Donkey Kong or you like the big yeah, it's whatever. the big ones that have like the high speed but they don't <laughs> accelerate, right? Like that's that's JK yeah. Dobbins. I, I think I'm I might I might have it backwards, <laughs> yeah. but I think yeah yeah. So because yeah, no. like, Dobbins like he can he has he still has burst, but it's like you don't don't expect him. He'll get. Don't expect him to get like a sixty-yard touchdown. He might get like a few thirty-yard runs because he can. He can bust through the hole. He just once he gets to, like to top speed, yeah. it he's not like really accelerating. He's getting falls off behind. very fast. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So I think that's what the Achilles is kind of showing. Yeah. But he's still he's still side to side. He still knows where to go uh, with the ball, and uh, you know he's familiar with this uh, Greg Roman uh, run scheme as well. So, uh, all right, the. Browns are going to Jacksonville. Jacksonville favored by three. The total is 42. Who do, you, who do you like in this game? Well, have to go with the obligatory Brian Thomas Jr. recommendation here at 4,800. At least and until they, they have him priced over 5K, I'm going to recommend him every single time. Uh, had a great debut. Uh, like I said, he was robbed of another touchdown where Jalen Ramsey just basically tackled him instead of letting him catch the touchdown. Um and, you know, the Jags kind of – you did mention that they were running way more than I thought, but they did kind of take their foot off the gas a bit uh, when they had a uh, two-score lead on Miami. Um, so they just weren't throwing that much. And, you know, the Browns' defense looked vulnerable at home uh, against the Cowboys. Now they're on the road where they struggled last year. So I, I wouldn't be too scared away from the matchup. So love Brian Thomas Jr. again here. But uh, I think when it comes to, like, a real flyer here, I think Jordan Atkins – is certainly worth a look at 3K, especially given the tight end situation around the league. But uh, he literally is the next man up with David and Joku out. They they did not have another tight end on their active roster last week. They're kind of scrambling to figure out who um, his backup will be this week. But you know he's flashed at times in the past. Um, back when Deshaun Watson was good on the Texans, that's when Aikens was pretty good uh, and had some useful games. Um, unfortunately, I think that version of Watson. Uh, is no longer with us. Uh, but I still think uh, Aikens is worth a flyer at 3K, just given the tie-in landscape. And um, I'm curious, like, do you think he's going to be highly rostered at that or are people just kind of over the Browns offense and uh, his roster ship will be pretty low here? Yeah, no, I don't think anyone's playing Jordan Aikens. Okay, perfect. Okay, so <laughs> I, I, I could be wrong. Maybe if we, yeah. maybe because we just talked about all these guys who scored touchdowns that we called out last week, I, but and like I don't think we're moving this that way. Like, who wants to play Jordan Aikens? Like we don't, like, even, like we don't even. The Browns essentially don't care about the tight end position. That's why they didn't even have a third one on the roster. And of course, their starting tight end gets hurt in week one when they don't have a third active tight end yeah, like, like come on come on guys like yeah. who does that yeah so yeah, like they're just so, trying to shoehorn like at this point you know what's crazy jordan Aikens is probably a better tight end than deshaun watson is quarterback <laughs> oh yeah well, that's that goes without saying uh, i'm actually for this play i'm i'm rooting for an in-game benching and Jameis winston to come in mm. and just revive this entire offense so that's the wait isn't going isn't here. dtr the backup uh, didn't they? Didn't that? Was yes that, no. that what they said in the preseason? Um, I, I think it's kind of a toss up. I yeah. think that they were were was that? No, before I think they. they said, I'm pretty sure they said league? DTR, and then they said they were going to look to trade both of them, or something. I don't know. I don't know. But either way, yeah, we do, Deshaun Watson. Either either one would be an upgrade over Deshaun right now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Aikens might play every single snap because they yep. still don't have another tight end if, if Njoku sits. So they got to sign somebody. Or so he's like 3K. 
He's like three K K Dotton. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, speaking of tight ends, uh, New Orleans at Dallas. Dallas favored by six and a half to total 45 and a half. Uh, Taysom Hill still under 4K. Five carries last week, an end zone target. Barely missed him on an end zone mm. target. So, uh, he has still has upside. This is a, uh, you know, coming off a week where he didn't blow up. So, <laughs> I always feel, I always feel better about Taysom coming off those weeks, you know. Yep. And, more importantly, perhaps more importantly, uh, Foster Moreau is in the concussion protocol. Foster Moreau caught a touchdown and outsnapped or outrouted uh, Juwan Johnson. I haven't looked at the actual snaps on run plays, but uh, yeah. So Foster Moreau was a leading tight end in terms of routes run for the Saints last week. Now he's in the concussion protocol. So uh, you'll see a bump for Johnson. You'll see a bump for Hill. But, you know, five carries if he and an end zone target. If you can add maybe a couple more, you know, more targets to those or just break one uh, running the ball uh, you're in business here so always like Taysom uh, is an upside play in DFS all right Jets at Titans ugly three and a half are the Jets favorite on the road the total is 41 who do you like in uh, this one short week for the Jets do I have to take somebody from this game okay fine I'll I'll go go with uh, Tajay Spears at 5k uh, you know, week one, uh, Tony Pollard handled most of the early down work and Spears uh, handled most of the passing down work. So just given the Titans led for most of the game, that was that was a better game script um, for Pollard. But, you know, head coach Brian Callahan said after the game, he wants uh, the touches to be more even, uh, which is great news for Spears. So I think that they're going to give him more early down work here and, you know, keep up the passing down role. Uh, so this is, you know, a potential training game script where I think this could be set up better uh, for Spears. Uh, don't love it. But again, if you're going to go somebody from this game, I think Spears is a decent flyer at 5K since I think he'll he'll bounce back here with a good week, too. Why do the coaches always say that stuff at like the wrong time? Like Pollard's coming off a great debut, you know, 15 carries, 80, 16 carries, 82 yards and a touchdown average over five yards of carries. Like, oh yeah, I want, I want the other guy to get more touches. It's like, yo, why? You could at least wait till he had like a meh game oh, to say true. that. You know what I mean? Like, sheesh. Yeah, it's um, because then, then you'd be kind of like slamming Pollard. Uh, I guess. Uh, you kind of yeah, want to make true. it be more optimistic. Um, no, but yeah, yeah, I, I mean, like it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's, you know a, I mean? that's a fair point. It's just it's just weird because I feel like that happens a lot. It's like, oh yeah, the guy who just did good. We don't want him to play as much. It's like, yeah, he, yeah, and he wasn't saying in a way that was kind of shitting on Pollard. Uh, the best was Shanahan sort of throwing Jordan Mason under the bus, saying, <laughs> "I didn't tell him. I didn't tell him that Friday night." Which you know he's probably full of shit. But I think Callahan's is being nice. Um, so just going, ignoring his coach speak, just based on the usage. Uh, Spears was handling the passing down work. This is kind of how I expected it. So again, this is a backfield. I think when the Titans are in a tr- more trailing game script, Spears would, uh, you know, get a little bit of boost. But it- it's nice knowing that the the coach is nice and wants to give more touches. Did you see the Will Levis kneel down last week? You mean when he when he threw it and he went like that? <laughs> he just kneeled yeah. down. <laughs> He's just like ah. Yeah. Instead yeah. of chasing the guy, yeah, why the hell <laughs> yeah. did I do that? Yeah, <laughs> like he was. I think we were all we were all doing that. Yeah, 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 so, uh, yeah. That was man. <laughs> he had a, he had a few other just potentially disastrous plays he lucked out on. Uh, yeah. That one he did not luck out on, and he missed Calvin really for two touchdowns, easy touchdowns. Yeah, no, it was a disaster. Uh, both quarterbacks <laughs> were a disaster yeah. in that game. Wow. What a oof. Uh, okay. Pitt, speaking of disastrous quarterbacks, <laughs> Pitts, <laughs> Pittsburgh at Denver. Uh, Denver is a three point underdog at home. The total is 36 and a half. And this is in a, a season where high. the kickoff is, <laughs> the kickoff <laughs> is adding like another point, you know, cause you know, a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of touchbacks coming out to the 30 and, or, or returns. So the fact a 36 and a half is really like a 35 and a half. Um, mm. But I, yeah, I can't say it's it's unwarranted. Uh, McLaughlin, I'm going with him in this one, 4,500. Now he was outsnapped by Javante Williams, 52 to 35 percent. So there is the the floor is still low, uh, especially if Denver actually gets their shit together and uh, leads for some of this game, which you could see Pittsburgh laying an egg after pulling an upset on the road. Um, but 
uh, he did out touch Devonte fifteen to nine, and you know I think you mentioned on the waiver pod that he came close to actually getting yardage on a couple of receptions, but he finished with what five catches for a yard or something like that. So <laughs> yeah, um, but the fact that he you know they were making a concerted effort to get him touches that's what we kind of thought that was going to happen. Like he was the guy, you know, heading into the year where you said, okay, last year, Javante kind of wore down, wasn't quite as efficient. Maybe the injury affected him. Um, and, you know, Javante looked okay in, in the first game, didn't look great, didn't look terrible, but um, you know, McLaughlin is a guy who looks like they're going to try to get more, more touches too. So, uh, you know, I don't know if the 15 and six touch edge will hold, but could be somewhere around, 50 50 60 40 should should be able to get to double digits uh this week in most weeks if, if that whole, if the snap rates uh hold so um estimate though is a wild card but uh he, the mm-hmm. fact that estimate is not playing much on pass downs and i think he had like a he's had a couple of just terrible pass plays and fumbles and just all kinds of mishaps uh so i think mclaughlin will hold off uh you know or hold his you know 10 10 ish touch plus projection for at least a few yeah. more weeks until he you know unless he just keeps going five catches for one yard then oh, then he'll God. probably wear out his welcome pretty quick but it's only week two so we're gonna bet on yeah. the usage and yeah uh, I, yeah no i i had over uh 39 and a half rushing and receiving yards so you better freaking believe mclaughlin's going off this week <laughs> um, and I, right. i'm kind of sad that we, we we probably won't see a russell wilson revenge game here Oh, oh, I mean, but maybe hey, we'll it, see some ridiculous, you know, sideline stuff that you'll point yeah, out next week. But uh, it, it just be yeah. on the sidelines, full pads, just looking angry yeah. as hell with the team up. Oh, <laughs> um, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think who else is. I'm trying to who else. Who was the last guy that was like mad when his team won? There was somebody. Was it? Is it? Is it Deontay Johnson? I feel like it was Deontay. I feel like um, it was a Steeler. Or Clay Mac Sorry, Jones. Like was Mac a- Jones when Bailey Zappi came in. <laughs> but that, I mean, Mac Jones had no reason to ever be happy the way he played the last year. So I, I give him a pass. Uh, <laughs> but man, yeah. Uh, let's move on. Another low total game: Seattle oh, at wow. New England. New England three and a half point underdogs at home. The total thirty eight in this one. A whole a whopping thirty eight. Uh, who do you like? Uh, I'm going to go with Noah Fant at thirty six hundred. Uh, had a healthy 71% routes run rate in week one. Um, Might have actually been eased in action. He was coming back from a toe injury. So he's a guy that I think could clear an 80% routes run rate uh, as soon as this week. Um, after all, he he has his tight end room all to himself now with uh, Will Disley and Colby Parkinson on new teams. So um, I was pretty high on Fant uh, heading into the season. I, I think you know it's going to take him a couple weeks to get over this toe injury. Uh, but like his upside here, he's still, you know, a very talented pass catching tight end. So if, if he gets the, you know, the playing time and then, you know, more targets going forward, I think he could pop. And again, just the, the tight end position being so volatile, I think it's worth taking flyers on these lower end guys that maybe didn't pop week one. Um, so, you know, I like uh, taking uh, Noah Fant at 3,600 here. Yeah, he should have that uh, that tight end like he should be that got clear, clear number one tight end. And I think he was a little banged up uh, heading into last week. So he should be healthier yep. um, going forward as well. Uh, Giants at Washington, Washington favored by one and a half, the total 44. Uh, this is where I'm going with the quarterback. Uh, Daniel Jones, just 5,300 Washington allowed Baker Mayfield to complete 80% of his passes for 9.6 yards in an attempt and allowed the second most fantasy points uh, to the position last week. Daniel Jones, I've talked about this uh, on other shows, but much better on the road for some reason. 6.9 yards in attempt, 35 touchdowns, 14 picks. At home, 5.8 yards in attempt, 27 touchdowns, 28 picks. Uh, and he's averaged about six to eight rushing attempts per game under Brian Dable and has scored a rushing touchdown in about a third of his game. So uh, just like Jaden Daniels hit with the anytime touchdown last week, um, Jones might be a good bet uh, to get in the end zone. Uh, this week because you know the way he looked as a passer even against his defense maybe they still uh, design a few runs for him uh, and Slayton is uh, is in the concussion protocol so uh, if Jalen Hyatt is on the field that just makes it more likely that n- one less guy is open so uh, <laughs> yeah maybe more rushing for scrambling for uh, Jones this week 
Uh, all right. Tampa at Detroit. Detroit, seven point favorite. The total 51 uh, and a half in that one. What do you like there? I think there's a, there's a couple uh, receivers with just really high ceilings in this game. So I think on the Lions side, you know, Jamison Williams at 5,300 might be kind of obvious coming off his career best game. But as you mentioned, the, you know, Buck secondary is all banged up. So um, he could actually have an encore game here, another big game. Uh, if the Lions exploit uh, the Bucks secondary, it's just going to be tough for teams to guard Amon Ross St. Brown, Sam Laporta, worry about Jameer Gibbs or Dave Montgomery and, oh, Jamison Williams. So uh, just love his upside here. Um, worth, you know, 5,300, even if he's pretty chalky, he just has a massive ceiling here. Um, on the other side, going with rookie Jalen McMillan of the Bucks at 3,600. He's another guy that could be fairly chalky. He did have a good week one, but, um, you know, he's operating as a clear number three wide receiver in this offense over Trey Palmer. Um, you know, Kay Dotton's out there running wind sprints. So there could absolutely be three viable receivers in this offense, especially against, you know, more of a pass funnel defense in the Lions. Uh, I, I don't think Tampa Bay is going to be moving the ball much on the ground. So, um, you know, McMillan had an 88 percent routes run rate. Only saw three targets, but they were downfield. He had an A dot of 17.7. So again, if if we're banking on sort of low volume, we do want that high upside downfield targets, which he has. But again, he's coming off a good game. Uh, he's 3,600. So he, his ownership will be healthy here, but I still think he's worth it uh, in GPPs just to get his upside. Yeah, it's nice and cheap. You can stack him with Mayfield and maybe like either Evans or Godwin. So there's yeah. still ways to kind of different, you know, like make it a little uh, more, uh, you know, less chalky if you kind of mix up the stacks. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Rams at the Cardinals. Cardinals favored by one and a half. The total 49 and a half. A couple of guys I like here. Uh, Colby Parkinson at 3,100. He was a tight end, what, seven last week on just five targets. Caught four for 47. But more importantly, at 82% route rate. And now Puka Nakua is out, so his target rate. Uh, could increase and then Tyra Johnson at 3300 he may very well be a one-for-one -one replacement for Puka Nakua he was last week uh Nakua 29 percent route rate and Johnson the other 65 percent route rate so you know about close adds up close to 100 uh, he was the guy that pretty much played uh once Puka went down he's targeted on 21 percent of his routes caught five for 79 on seven targets and uh you know Demarcus Robinson's all, kind of an obvious one as well, but I, I think there's a chance Johnson could be this year's Demarcus Robinson uh, because you know you put up five for seventy nine and there was some you know some buzz about Johnson like earlier in his career with Tampa Bay and then he kind of fell off the map for a while. But the fact that he you know it, like Jordan Whittington had a lot of buzz in preseason. Tutu Atwell was uh, a very uh, productive uh, member of the team for like what the first half of last year as well. So the fact that Johnson played over both of them once Puka went down. Tells you number one, he's either the, the one for one replacement, or number two, he's just having a really good camp and they really like him, uh, and he's just that number four wide receiver. Either way, so either way, uh, I think it spell it bodes well for Johnson, especially because he was productive uh, once he came in the game. So uh, like him uh, as well as Parkinson uh, in this one. All right, Colts at Packers. Colts favored by a field goal. The total around forty one. Uh, who do you like in this one? Remember, Malik Willis is going to make the start at quarterback for Green Bay for Jordan Love. And for the Colts, it looks like one of their starting quarters, Juju Brents, uh, is going to be out for the foreseeable future. But I don't know if that matters with, uh, with Willis. <laughs> well, yeah, Willis for now, we're still on um, Josh Dobbs watch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm going to go with another rookie wide receiver here in A.D. Mitchell at 4K. Uh, coming off a really bad stat line, I'll say it that way. Uh, one catch for two yards on five targets. Um, but, you know, he he ran around on 75% of Richardson's dropback. So assuming that Josh Downs remains out this week, um, you know, this play is tentative on that. I think Mitchell's going to see a ton of playing time again. And it was just unfortunate um, that, you know, Richardson had a handful of great throws and a handful of bad throws. Uh his good throws went to Alec Pierce and Ashton Doolin. Uh, his right. bad throws, unfortunately, went to Mitchell because Mitchell was, I would say, wide open on a couple of them where 
Mitchell could have had a absolutely massive game if Richardson didn't overthrow him. So again, it was just kind of bad luck for Mitchell. He looked great, uh, but that's just the Anthony Richardson experience. Um, so I think I think it's a good time to buy low on Mitchell after the the one catch two yard game next week. He could easily be the one that gets the the errant accurate throw by Richardson. So I think this is a great spot to take Mitchell. Um, I do take your point that like. I think the Colts can probably just lean on the run here and not like air it out in order to beat the Packers. Um, but again, like Richards is going to have a couple deep balls here and hopefully this time uh, Mitchell hauls them in. So again, I think this is a great buy low spot for Mitchell. Yeah. And Josh down still, still looking iffy there. So um, yeah, I might, might see another week of Mitchell starting. He played that 75% uh, route role that downs is usually, uh, in with Pierce uh, on the outside. Uh, Bengals at the Chiefs. Chiefs favored by six, the total 47 and a half. Had a Mario Kart reference earlier, so it's only right I go with Yoshi <laughs> here. Andre Yosevash, uh, 3,900. 100% route rate in week one. T. Higgins, doubtful again. Kansas City's likely to put up more than the 16 points that New England did. And, uh, you know, I think after like the Tanner Hudson disaster, maybe more targets start going to the Yosevash. Jermaine Burton still doesn't look like a factor uh, in the offense. I think he only ran one route. Uh, Trenton Irwin was the number three receiver. So that, that's just good for Yosevash because I think it's, it's Jamar Chase, number one. And then Yosevash looks like he's going to be the number two guy, 100% route rate. T, uh, Mike Isicki almost caught a touchdown, but he was only around 45%. So it's Yosevash, as long as Higgins is out, he's the clear number two guy uh, in terms of, you know, routes and therefore, uh, you know, target expectation in this offense. And should be a comp- like, uh, even though Cincinnati trailed for a bunch in that New England game, like this is one where, you know, the Chiefs, they, they look great on offense now. It's a long week. You know, they could end up putting up, you know, 30 plus. Uh, so, and, and Joe Burrow should be a little less rusty this week. So uh, I think Yosevash is still a, a buy here for uh, Cincinnati. 